I'd like for you to write this in your notes, please. The process and the privileges of kingdom seeking. The process and the privileges of seeking the kingdom first. Uh, our subtitle is The Advantage of Living in the Kingdom. The Advantage of Living in the Kingdom. Nothing is more dangerous than religion. Religion is not the solution to man's problems. The number one source of all of our problems today, including the one right now in Lebanon, is a religious problem. Religion motivates people to kill, to compete, to compare, to fight, to be jealous, and to create war. Can you imagine that the motivation for bin Laden was religious? More people are being killed through religion than any other form of motivation. If you study history books, some of the largest mass murders in history were instigated by religious belief. Thank God Jesus did not bring a religion to earth. Christianity is a religion and a very troublesome one. As a matter of fact, if you study history, most of the diabolical dead dealing wars in history were motivated by Christianity. The killing of hundreds of thousands of Jews in the Inquisition was by Christians. The mass murders and massacre of hundreds of thousands of people in Europe in the Crusades were done under the banner of Christianity. Hitler himself believed that he was called by the Christian God to punish the Jew for killing Jesus. The motivation of religion is destructive. But not only is religion destructive on the side of its abuse of humans, but religion is also destructive in the sense that it keeps people away from the kingdom. Why? Because religion is the most powerful substitute for the kingdom of God. If you believe you have the real thing, then why search? And that's the problem in religion. If you think you found it, then you stop searching. And religion makes you believe you found it. Hmm. The problem is, if you haven't found it, and it means whatever you're looking for, which is the kingdom of God, if you haven't found it, but you believe you found it, but you haven't found it, then whatever you think you have that is it will not satisfy you. This is why religion is so empty. The reason why religion is so busy full of activities is to keep you preoccupied so you won't have time to think about your emptiness that still exists. This is why religious programs are so full of pro projects, things to do. That's why we love rituals. Could you imagine a service without candles and incense? What would you do for an hour if there was no Lord's Supper to take? And so we are distracted from the kingdom by religion.
when we look at this subject of the kingdom of God we find out that everything you need is in the kingdom let me give you a couple reasons why we focus on this as a priority I am convinced that our greatest problem in life is choosing what to do with our time how do we spend our day and here's my conviction I believe that life was designed to be very simple how many of you would like to sim simplify your life right now? Let me see your hands. Wouldn't it be great just, just, okay. I found out from Jesus Christ that you only got to do two things for the rest of your life and your life will be perfect. Only two things. As a matter of fact, all your problems are answered in two things. Now when you reduce life to two things, that's simple. Today, I testify of God's kingdom in my life. When I was a Christian, I was broke, busted, tired, and saying hallelujah. And then I entered kingdom living. Today, I am debt free. I don't owe nobody nothing personally. I paid off all my house, car, land. I'm debt free. That's why I wear this pin. To remind me what set me free. And it was not Christianity. It was the kingdom of God. I was trying to be free from pressure and oppression all my life in church. I grew up in church. My father, faithful man of God, a Baptist pastor. Always needing something. And the only explanation I have for you, for my life, being totally free right now, is the kingdom of God. And that's why I want to teach you this today, because I want you to be just like me, free from pressure. Anybody interested? Maybe you love your bills, I don't know. Maybe you love high blood pressure, I don't know. Maybe you're so used to taking your insulin, you don't want to break up the routine. What set me free was when I understood the difference between the kingdom of God and religion. And my hope and prayer is that it shall happen to you also. Say amen. amen. The key to simplifying your life is one word, prioritization. If you don't set priorities, your life will be complicated. Priority means you identify the correct and the right thing in life to do. That's what you want to do with your life, son. You want to find out what's the correct thing and the right thing. And that's what you want to do in life. Nothing else. You want to find out what's the most important thing, what's the right thing, and what's the correct thing. And prioritization is identifying the correct and the right thing to do and the most important thing to do in life. And so Jesus identified for all of us what is the correct thing for us to do and the right thing for us to do for all humanity? 6.7 billion people, Jesus gave us the answer to a simple life. Everyone in this room is motivated by the same thing. And that's why this message is for you. You are motivated by survival. And when I say survival, you are motivated by making a living. Tomorrow you will be up, go into a job, go into an office, working with people, working with clients, working with customers, you'll be working in some warehouse, you'll be doing some electrical work, some kind of construction work, uh, some teaching work, something you're going to be doing tomorrow in the hospital, in a restaurant, somewhere you're going to be working to pay bills. There's nothing wrong with work. But according to Jesus, that is not your priority. And it shouldn't be. Let me put it this way. Matthew 6, 25. Read with me out loud. Read. Therefore, come on, out loud. Therefore, I tell you, 
he's talking to you now do not worry about your life stop reading he says stop worrying about your life and then he decides to define what you think life is he says here's what life is to you number one what will we eat what will we drink what about our bodies what will we wear and he's right everything most of us do is to keep a roof over our heads clothes on our back food in the kitchen and some water that's clean to drink and everything we do is to keep the light on water on food coming clothing clean and the house over our head that's how much he says he says you call that life and then he attacks us he says is not life more important than these things food and the body more important than clothes about six weeks from now I'm gonna talk about that last part your body more important than clothes he says life is more than this matter of fact he goes on the next verse Luke 20 12 verse 22 says then Jesus said to his disciples therefore I tell you do not worry everybody say worry, worry. say it loud worry. everybody worry. Little louder worry. shout it worry. louder worry. he said that's what you're doing every day do not worry about what you will eat what you will drink don't worry about what you call life life is more important than food and the body more than clothes he repeats himself again and look at the next verse i love this matthew 6 33 but seek ye first so he cancels your preoccupation your priorities and he gives you his everybody say first first means that which is priority your priority for the rest of your life should not be food and clothes and house and land and car your priority should be something different he says who don't miss next week because you see I figured it out and it works if you seek things they will kill you they will wear you out When your food becomes life and clothing become life and water becomes life and and mortgage become life he says you're not living as a matter of fact uh, we are so busy making a living we don't have no life people spend all their lives building a house and then don't enjoy it pay for a car and only use it to go to work so they can pay for it again he says seek ye first what the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you all of these what things he called food things bread things water things clothing things houses things cars things he says you were not created to seek things you were not born to seek things and yet he says Maslow is right that the motivation for all human behavior is things what I shall eat what I should drink what I should wear he says Maslow is right and it's killing us but he says seek first the kingdom there's something Jesus knew that we still haven't gotten first of all his number one priority is very clear seek first he he identifies God's priority for humanity and this is not just for some people it's for all humanity seek first the kingdom of God what is priority priority I mean, write this down real quick the word priority means the principal thing or putting things first that are first priority means to establish the most important thing or primary focus priority means placing an order of importance or placing the highest value upon something he said place the highest value upon the kingdom 
Priority means first among all others. That means putting the kingdom first before everything else. Pursue the kingdom before anything else, he says, and everything else will come after you. My stress-free life is not because I am a genius. I have experienced kingdom life. And it doesn't happen overnight. But it can happen tonight in your life. When you get a revelation of the kingdom, it goes down into the pit of your belly. Where worry actually stops, not because you try to stop worrying. In a kingdom, you just don't because your makeup, your psyche has changed. What is God's priority? The kingdom. First of all, let's look at these words right quick. He says, first of all, what? Seek. Seek means to pursue. It means to study, to explore, to understand, to learn, to consider, to desire, to know, to have a passion for something. To seek means to preoccupy yourself with or to be dedicated to something. Now that's the word Jesus used in the Hebrew. He says seek means pursue first the kingdom. Study the kingdom. Explore the kingdom. Seek to understand the kingdom. Learn about the kingdom. Consider the kingdom. Desire to know the kingdom first. First, have a passion for the kingdom and be diligently dedicated to the kingdom first. In other words, preoccupy yourself with the kingdom all the time, all day first, he says, and you will have all your needs met. What does he mean? I'm living proof. Hallelujah. Look at that list. That's your first command from him. That's a command. Pursue the kingdom. Don't pursue food and clothing anymore. Seek. Dedicate yourself to. Understand. Get to know. That's why I'm teaching on it for the next four or five years. Because we know nothing about the kingdom. That's why we're working so hard and broke. Apparently, everything we need is in the kingdom. But we don't know the kingdom. And so we got to go after everything we need. And everything we need is wearing us out. Seek. I like the next word he uses first. Everybody say first. First means priority, principal thing. Before all others, most important, highest value, above everything else. In other words, to actually be first means that you establish it as your primary interest. I wear my kingdom first pen so I can remind myself 24 hours a day that the kingdom is first in my life. I think kingdom, Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday morning, the board meeting, when I'm in traffic, when I'm sitting in a business deal, when I'm trying to talk to a group of leaders, when I'm advising a government leader, I'm thinking kingdom first. Always kingdom. Why? Nothing works without kingdom first. And the question is, how do you do this? That's why you're here today. We're going to talk about how to do this. How do you seek the kingdom first? Seek first what? The kingdom. What is the kingdom? First of all, the kingdom is not a religion, eh? The word kingdom is the word Jesus used, the word mamlakak in Hebrew. Jesus spoke Hebrew. And here's the word he used. He used the word mamlakak. Seek ye first mamlakak. Mamlakak is the Hebrew word which means dominion. And the word dominion translated into Greek is basilia. And the word mamlakak and basilia means king, sovereignty. It means royal power, dominion, reign, royal rulership. Actually, the word kingdom means the governing authority of a king over a territory. Let me put it this way. Mamlaka is not a religion. It's a government. Seek ye first the governing authority of God in your life and over earth, and everything shall be added unto you. Seek ye first to get into the government of God. Get into God's country. As a matter of fact, a kingdom is a territory ruled by a king, which means that a kingdom is a country. Everybody say country. Look at me. I want to show you something. Jesus used two, two phrases. Don't let the devil steal his information, okay? Some of you need to make yourself watch me. It's very important. Two phrases Jesus used that are very important. He used the term kingdom of heaven 
and then the second was kingdom of God now both phrases are not interchangeable they are not interchangeable they are different the kingdom of heaven is a place heaven is a place heaven is an invisible territory it is a country it's a place so when he used the term kingdom of heaven he's referring to the the place where the king of creation resides it's the country of heaven it's invisible comprende okay that's important kingdom kingdom of God is different kingdom of God is the influence of that country in another territory okay let me try it this way when I was in England I popped by to visit our High Commissioner from the Bahamas when I went to the territory where our embassy is the Bahamas do you know that when I walked onto the property I literally walked on to the Bahamas do you all know that you know that okay <laughs> the American Embassy in the Bahamas is not the Bahamas if you was a criminal and you ran from the Bahamian police and you jumped their fence our police could not arrest you because in that wall American Embassy is America did you all know that you can get asylum by jumping that wall our government loses control over you if you jump the American Embassy wall because the ambassador's location is the country he is from <laughs> so you have America and then you have the influence of America America is the place where the embassy is is its influence are you getting this so Jesus was saying very different things he said look he says the kingdom of heaven is the mother country and the kingdom of God is the impact of the influence of that country on earth now remember wherever a country buys an embassy it becomes the country that bought it they own that piece of property the problem with the earth is the earth is the Lord's the word Lord is the Hebrew word <laughs> Yahweh or Adonai Lord and it means owner now quote the verse again the earth is the owners and the fullness thereof so God is saying look I own the planet my only problem is I ain't running it because somebody else invaded it I had put my ambassador there and he lost control of government property <laughs> hallelujah the king came back to earth to reclaim management control not ownership anyhow y'all ain't getting this I go no man see Christ didn't come to get earth back as ownership he came to get it back as management Adam never got ownership he got rulership he lost rulership Christ came to get rulership back but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and the world and they that, that means the bank that won't lend you money is his property I just said something very important. Okay, let me tell you how it works. See, 
It doesn't work because he knows that. It doesn't work because you don't know that. Still ain't got it. See, the problem with the kingdom life is you have to impose it. Still ain't coming through. Okay. <laughs> if I give you authority and you don't use it, then you'll get abused. So if you don't believe that he owns the bank that's telling you no, you can't get your house, you won't get your house. Jesus said this way. He says, it ain't according to God. You know, he says, it's according to your faith, be it unto you. In other words, you control how much of this happens to you by what you believe. And if you believe the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, then you don't say take no for an answer. Kingdom living is not religion. It's politics. Politics is about rights. Can I hear an amen? amen? The kingdom of God is not a religion. The word Jesus used means rulership. It means government. It means dominion. Seek ye first the dominion, the rulership, the government of God on earth and it's righteousness righteousness means to be properly aligned with the authority and he says and everything will be added to you i want you to to write this down please the kingdom of god seek ye first what the kingdom of god now why did christ say the kingdom of god because there are other kingdoms huh. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was saying, look, don't seek democracy. Don't seek the republic. Don't seek communism. Don't seek socialism. None of them will meet your needs. He said, they will kill you. Seek first the government of God and its righteousness. Don't miss next week. We're going to talk about righteousness a little bit. Because righteousness is the key to this whole thing. See? It means to be properly related to the government. That's all it means. It means right standing with the government or authority. If you are not in right standing with the government, they put you in jail. Take away your rights, your passport. You can't travel. When you break the law of a country, you lose your rights. That's what, the rights, that's what it means. If you, if you enter God's country and stay in proper relationship with the government it says everything you need will be added to you now you got to follow me here for the next few minutes this is very important otherwise this won't make sense if you don't understand what I'm talking about okay I am debt free today because I understand this I, mean, I was given a lead jet with no strings attached parked down the road I own it it's mine now he says Things will be added. Everybody else working for a jet, struggling, trying to make the payments. The fella give it to me. All right, I got one nice Jaguar out there. I ain't buy that. That was given to me. Listen, why don't you set yourself up this morning where people just got to give you things? Huh? But you see, the problem is you don't believe you can live like that. That's the problem. You believe you got to have two lumps in the breast, <laughs> high blood pressure, stress in your back, curvature of the spine because the muscles so tight they cause you twine to twist because of the stress that you're carrying. And when you half beat up and 90 years old and can't climb the step of the house, then you say, well, praise the Lord, I think I made it. You can't even climb the steps. And the Bible says, the commandments of the Lord, they bless you and they don't bring any sorrow. Hmm. 
I am not lucky. I learned the secret. Why do you worry? What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, what you will drive, how you will live. Seek first the kingdom of God. Now, let me tell you something. The reason why he said the kingdom of God is because the kingdom of God is different from every other form of government. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I am pleased to announce that I just finished my, my second book on the kingdom. It's about to be released. It's going to be released in New York City and in Pennsylvania in September. The publishing company has, I mean, they spent all kind of money on this thing because they know it's going to be a best-selling book. Now, I'm excited for the book, not because of the money stuff. I'm excited because this is the first time I got a chance to write the first five chapters explaining and exposing the weaknesses of all other governments except the kingdom. Walmart signed a contract already with the publishing company for my book. So they want my book to be their number one release book for the Christmas in all Walmart stores. Now, why does God open that door? Because this message must be preached to every nation, he says. He is financing it through the systems. I can't explain that. Except the kingdom. Now, don't miss what I'm going to say. The kingdom of God is different. That's why Jesus said, let me put it another way. Do not trust democracy, but seek ye first. Do not trust socialism, but seek ye first. Do not trust the Republican form of government. Seek ye first. Do not trust parliamentary democracy. Seek ye first, he says. Don't trust those systems. Those systems make you run after food. They play games with your mind by offering you water and clothing. They want your vote by giving you bread. They are not designed to make you debt free. Guaranteed. He said, don't trust them. Be in the world, but not of the system. You are supposed to use the world system, not let it use you. How do you become free from the system? I got the answer for you. Here's, a, here's something to remember. A kingdom means the government of God, the rulership of God. It means the dominion of God over earth. It means God's will extended and executed on earth. It means God's jurisdiction. Seek ye first God's jurisdiction on earth. Seek ye first God's government on earth. Seek ye first God's administration on earth. Seek ye first God's impact on earth in your life, in your business, in your education, in your family, in your marriage, in your kids, in your home. Let the kingdom come first in your whole life, he says, and everything you need that other people run after will come after you. I have been spending the last five years of my life just giving. I don't know if you know how it feels. When people come with a need and you can give it to them. No, you don't know the feeling that is. You will get there. I prophesy you will be there. You will be in a place soon where you will be so prosperous there will be no need you won't be able to support and respond to. Now, normally you receive and you say amen. Amen means let it be unto me. You will become exactly what God says. Let me tell you, oh God, help me. Listen. Frustrated man. See, you can't tell me you with God and you broke. 
Them two don't add up. No, sir. God told Abraham, my sister. He said, Abraham, okay. Follow me. Watch him now. And then God decides to tell Abraham what happens when you follow him. He said, first of all, I can bless you. Okay? Bless you means you get what you need. But God said, no, 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 no. But in this kingdom, this thing came here about just you. He said, then I will make you a blessing. That means you can always have too much. You get to bless other people. Anybody ready for that kind of blessing? Oh, hallelujah. You are not supposed to have enough. That ain't kingdom living yet. You're so proud of your car. No, no, no. He said, you ain't blessed when you can, can give your car away. Now I'll be blessed. You know, I gave two cars away. Boy, I tell you. And I'm thinking about the third one right now. Because I found out something. If you think you own something, you are a Christian. That's a heavy statement. Religious people own things. Kingdom people own nothing. Because in kingdoms, you own nothing. The wealth is common. It's called commonwealth. Things pass through your hand. The minute you grab something, you shut down the kingdom. The minute you say, this is mine, you shut down the kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is tough living in a religion. The government of God is a kingdom government. Let me explain this to you. All right. Let me, let me define kingdom for you. What is a kingdom? I did my research for you. Write this down. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his will, his personal will, his personal will. Let me stop there for a minute. When I saw the research on this, I was shocked. Do you know that the Prime Minister Perry Christie of the Bahamas presently, Prime Minister Tony Blair of Great Britain, President Bush of the United States at the moment, do you know that none of them could impose their personal will on the country? That's why they have what they call a Congress, a Parliament, and a Senate. They are to make sure he doesn't impose his will. Everybody following me? Listen to me now, young people. I want you to learn this. Okay. See, the, in a in a in an earthly government, the kind we have, the leader of the country cannot impose his personal will on the country. As a matter of fact, the Senate could vote it down, the the Congress could vote it down. The parliament can vote it down, and he got to go with the majority. But in a kingdom, it is completely opposite. In a kingdom, the king has no cabinet. He has no congress. The king is the law and the authority himself, and his words become law. So when a king speaks, his personal will becomes policy oh dear this is why Jesus says look get out of democracy leave the system of communism communism is an attempt to create commonwealth without God you can't legislate people to love one another that's why it never works you can't make me give my farm away to people if I don't like them, 
Communism cannot work because the, the most important element in communism is love. And they got rid of it. They said, we don't believe in God, and God is. Huh. Let me put it this way. In a kingdom, when a king speaks, his personal will becomes national policy. Big difference. So the Bible says, seek first to enter God's country. Become a citizen of God's country under his government. And everything that you need will be added. <laughs> when you are under a democracy, if, follow me now, this is important, look at me. If you go to a government office and the politician promise you something, you better pray he get back in power so you can get it. Am I right? Because the next crew come in, whatever promises they was made, cancel. And some of you suffer from that right now. You're suffering from that now. Because his personal will cannot become policy. You're not protected. But a king is different. When a king gives you his word, it becomes a private legislation. Okay. Put it one more way. When they promise you something in this worldly kingdom, they got to vote on it. The Congress got to agree, the Parliament got to agree, the Senate got to agree. Now you know, people don't like you as it is. So if the, if the head of the country promised you something, and they got to vote on it, you ain't never going to get that. Am I right? Mm -mm. Enough of us don't like you, you ain't going to get no yes vote from us. Okay. However, in a kingdom, if the king gives you a promise, there's no vote. This is for you this week. This is for you this week. I am living this way. When a king speaks, it's completely opposite to a prime minister and a president. So, when the king said to Nehemiah. Said, Nehemiah, go and rebuild the wall. Go to my forest. Remember, now everything owned by the king. Get all the wood you want. Go to my quarry. Get the stones you want. Go to my pit. Get all the mortar you want. And here's some letters. If anybody stops you, you let me know. And if they try to hinder you, I will destroy them. Now, Nehemiah ended up in what I call a private national policy because it was a king talking to him and the king owned the whole country Jesus said look if you're in my kingdom and I make you a promise all the devil in hell demons in earth politicians friends hatred onions tomatoes enemies he said nobody could stop what I promise you and I'll make everybody work for you to make sure it gets done because I own all of them the Bible says the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord he can turn it this way listen man you went to the bank last week and told you no after this message go back again same person say I back again why he said he can turn the heart heart means the mind they switch and say I don't know why I doing this don't worry I know why you're doing it because someone owns you yeah. clap your hands all you kingdom citizens See, when you are under a king, it's called favor. Favor is, write this down, a personal policy. The government of heaven makes a personal policy just for you. 
<laughs> Listen. If the prime minister of your country call you in privately and make you some personal promises with government money, that is called corruption. But in a kingdom, it is called favor. How do you want to live? Under corruption or favor? Lift your hands and say, God, give me favor right now. Let me tell you something. It is so personal and private and powerful, it becomes national policy. That's why he says, once he speaks to you as a king, he says, a thousand will fall at your right. Ten thousand fall at your left. Everybody getting laid off, downsizing, small sizing, resizing. He, he said, but it won't come near your house. If you believe that, go ahead and say amen. amen. I am not a victim of our economy. Say it for yourself. Lebanon and Israel and Syria and Iran, they can do a little kapunkle up in a couple of days. You all better listen to me carefully and it's going to affect you. You think price is going up. You wait till about three weeks from now when the oil thing hits you. Your economy is going to rock. You better be in another one. I worry about nothing. Let me tell you something about private policy. Ooh. God told Trinity of Israel, he said, look, now they are in Egypt where there's so much slavery and they're under pressure, right? God said, okay, Moses, you tell Pharaoh, uh, I can take care of these specific group of people. He says, now, there will be farming. Farming means economic crisis. And in those days, you know, the whole economy is built on agriculture. So God said, look, tell you what, I'm going to destroy the economy. And my people, my citizens are going to be in that economy. Watch him now. I've got to watch this. Ooh, God's so sweet. God said, look, he said, you tell Pharaoh, I'm going to send locusts. Locusts means economic crisis where there's farming. <laughs> you know that. So here comes the locusts. He says, now, I will tell the locusts not to touch these certain farms. Now, I don't understand. Y'all don't understand. God said, look, <laughs> the grasshopper. God said, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. The Bible says a thousand will fall at your right. Ten thousand. He's about to make a policy today with you. Hallelujah. I prophesy that what happens to others will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Your business will not be at the mercy of the economy of the earth, but the heavens shall open over your business and they're going to wonder why are you prospering. Your answer will say, because I am under a different government. Clap your hands, all your kingdom citizens. Gosh, I'm sorry. I am prospering so much, I'm nervous. Let me tell you something. You got to believe this for yourself. Don't enjoy this teaching. Believe it. You are not to be a victim of the other government system. Change citizenship now. Let me close with this. The rulership and the governing influence of heaven on earth in and through your life and behavior. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over his territory, impacting it with his personal will and purpose, producing a what? A culture, a value system, a moral standard, and a lifestyle that reflects the king's desires and nature for his citizens. Read the last part. It does what? Reflects the what? The king's desires and his nature for his citizens. What does it, what does it do? It reflects the king's desire and nature, and nature for, his for his citizens. Okay, this is the last part. I can pick up here next week, but I got to give you this last part. 
Don't miss next week and pick up here, but I want you to get this, all right. This is where it all comes together. Here it is. A kingdom is different from a democracy and a republic. Here's how. Prime Minister Perry Christie does not lose sleep if you can't pay your light bill. If you cannot pay your mortgage, he goes to bed. He don't worry for you, he don't get involved in your business. If your car is repossessed by the bank, the Prime Minister don't get involved. That ain't his business. He don't take it personal, he goes to sleep with his car. President Bush doesn't call poor people in America to see how they're doing. He has no interest in their poverty. He goes to bed, eats his steak and eggs in the morning, and he enjoys his life. Please get this. That's the way governments work in the world. Problem. Kingdoms are different. Because in a kingdom, the king's reputation is contingent upon the standard of living and lifestyle of his citizens. That's an important definition. In other words, a king's nature and his reputation is reflected in the lifestyle and quality of life of his citizens. This is why a king takes poverty personal. David was a king. And David wrote these words, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. What is righteousness? Lined up with the government. He said, once a citizen is in alignment with the government of the king, they will never beg bread. Listen, in a kingdom, poverty is a disgrace to the king personally and publicly. So in a kingdom, it's different. The prime minister of the Bahamas doesn't take it personal if there's poor people in black village. He make his speech and then go back to his house on West Bay Street. And sleep. President Bush doesn't get uptight about the people sleeping under the bridge. It's not personal. But a king is different. Because you see, the state of the people is a reflection on his nature as a king and his reputation. So a king takes prosperity of his citizens personally. He takes poverty and sickness 
and disease and oppression of his citizens personally. It is not in the best interest of a king for his citizens to be broke. Because it reflects on his reputation. So now you understand why we close today the way we open it. The king says, why do you worry? What you will eat and drink and wear and live. You see, to even ask a king for bread is an insult. <laughs> Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus, take no thought. Don't even think about mortgage. Don't bring it up in your prayer. Don't insult me. You're telling me that I am a negligent, no good king. If you bring up your poverty, so the leaders of our countries all countries the average 99% of the politicians in politics are looking out for numero uno I say it on national TV though I tell you the truth opportunity for themselves fix yourself they say while you're in there fix yourself because you ain't gonna be there forever fix yourself they are not interested in you I don't care how much you think so the system is built to secure numero uno Matter of fact, they got it worked out so well where they call it capitalism. Capitalism is built on the notion of capitalizing on the poor. You see, capitalism cannot work unless there's a massive poor market. Yo, listen to me now, getting ready to go. It is not in the best interest of capitalist democracy for everyone to prosper it's bad for democracy bad for, for capitalism. why if everybody prosper then the standard of living goes up therefore the cost of living goes up therefore the cost of business goes up therefore you gotta pay more for your productions this is why they're shifting all the stuff to China why you can make a shirt in Nassau for 50 bucks or make in China for two dollars where are you gonna make it in China why them people so poor 25 cents is a day's wages now when they become rich like you where are you gonna take a shirt to get it made Want you learn something the system is built for four percent to always have the wealth That's why they have circles of wealth. They let you in if they want to. 
you working your butt off for 45 years and you still owe a mortgage sister follow me please I'm giving you the key to get out of this the system is designed to capitalize on the poor masses this is why it is not in the best interest of the industrial G8 for Africa to prosper Africa's good market <laughs> watch this now however in a kingdom it's opposite in a kingdom the king wants a lot of wealth as well the king wants to get as much wealth as he can not for himself he needs a lot of wealth so that all of his citizens could reflect his nature and that's why it's called common wealth the word commonwealth is not used in democracies and republics the wealth ain't common you got the rich rich and the poor poor and you got those in transition one way or the other but in a kingdom the, the ideal economy is everyone of access to the same wealth because the wealth is for the reputation of the king now let's let's think about it then what, what, what would you rather live under a capitalism democracy or in a kingdom okay here's what he means he says look if you get into my kingdom you don't seek things anymore that's my responsibility I make sure you got a nice house to represent me nice car to represent me nice clothes to represent me best food to represent me best you know uh, uh, educate for your kids represent my kids I take care of you for my sake Christianity doesn't do that Christianity competes you get blessed yet? No, I get blessed yet. Shall I hold? I still believe in God for mine. You got yours yet? Oh, but I got mine. You know, that's that, that that's religion. In kingdom, there's no comparison. Christ says, "Why do you worry what you eat and drink?" He said, "This this comes with being a citizen." I beg you today. Leave religion. And come into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus heard this and he was a religious leader and next week we can talk about him Nicodemus was a religious man in charge of the church Nicodemus heard Jesus talk about it like this and he said he said Jesus he said sir how can I enter this country the kingdom of God Christ says the same way you enter any any Christian citizenship you're born Not a religious experience he was talking practical he said look you want to enter my country you can be born into it just like you'd be born in any country you'd be born again into my country and when you're born into this country you ain't got to pay no one for citizenship no behind the deals all this stuff you know penance all this he said look you <laughs> you're born again of my spirit you are a member you are a citizen you are in the kingdom of God and all these things so only two things you got to do in life enter the kingdom and stay aligned righteousness seek ye first what and his and all of these things this week I prayed for you when I was in England I said oh God what do you want your people to know this weekend he says, tell them to change governments. 
be in the world, but not of the world. And that's happening to you if you desire it right now. In Jesus' name. Your days of worry are over. Can I suggest to you, don't plan small, plan big. Plan as big as the government make you think. Because the government has everything. Even what you have, the government says, that ain't nothing yet. This week is going to be a week of miraculous interventions in your life. He's going to provide for you. That's why he sent you here. Because your, your, your sense of security must not be in the system. And Peter says, oh Lord, the man at the door come to collect custom duties. And we ain't got no money. Christ says, look man, what do you mean we ain't got no money? He said, go throw a line over, catch a fish, and pay for everybody. Wow. I prophesy. There's a fish this week waiting for you somewhere. The king owns the wealth in the Roman government treasury and the wealth in the fish mouth. That means the king knows where everything is this week. You even know where it is. I thought today, in the first service, I thought it hit me. Elijah was hungry. And we got our own ways to get food, eh? You got to find a restaurant. You got to pay. And they cook it for you. Then you eat it, then you pay. God said, no, 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 Elijah, I got another way. I own birds. And I own some hot cakes. Someone just bake and put on the window. I own the window and the cakes. <laughs> Here comes these birds with hot cakes, the Bible says, flying and dropping them in the man's lap. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there's a bird this week. You all don't understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. There's an email that's going to show up in your email bank this week. And they're going to be carrying a lot of kingdom stuff you didn't expect. Anybody got faith for that? I tell you, I got an email this week. I straight. I straight, straight, straight. Straight. God got ways to bless you you don't even think about. Because he owns everything in Jesus name